Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Jonathan Weinhagen, President and CEO of the Minneapolis Regional Chamber. With me are B. Kyle, President and CEO of the St. Paul Area Chamber of Commerce, and Will Shore, Executive Director of East Metro Strong. We are here today to kick off a new coalition, Keep Minnesota Moving, to advocate for a stronger and more comprehensive transportation system, including more, better, and faster transit in the Twin Cities and across the state. Together, our three organizations represent more than 2,500 employers, and we're inviting other organizations and Minnesotans from across the state to join us in this effort. We believe there's growing momentum for transit investments that strengthen our economy and make our state an even more or an even better place for business and employees. Here's the simple fact. Transit is needed for our entire state to be able to compete economically. The four initiatives we're rolling out as the focus of Keep Minnesota Moving have bipartisan support. We're working with people from all political stripes and from across the state to move us forward. It is time to hit reset on this discussion, and we think now is the perfect time to do just that. Transit gets Minnesotans to jobs, schools, events, appointments, and more. Minnesotans choose to take more than 12 million transit rides in Greater Minnesota each year, more than 20, 95 million in the metro area. I'm going to briefly outline our four key initiatives before I hand it over to B and Will. Our focus during the 2019 legislative session will be, one, to advance the modern arterial bus rapid transit, or ABRT, service. The A line, which is already online, has been a great success with ridership across that line up 35%, and people love the great service and amenities. Two, to improve the current bus system by funding top projects in the Metro Transit Service Improvement Plan, we need to make our current bus system the backbone of transit even better. Three, fully fund transit in Greater Minnesota. Greater Minnesota employers tell us how hard it is to get employees to workplaces. We should make smart investments that will help the state grow and succeed. And four, fully fund core Metro Transit operations. 80% of people who choose transit are going to work or school. Minnesotans choose Metro Transit 95 million times a year. Metro Transit is an important part of our economy, and we need to ensure that our bus system is able to operate effectively. There's no room for an us versus them discussion of, for the us versus them discussion of last session. We're going to bring Minnesotans together around transit plans that move us forward. We support common sense, immediate actions for 2019 that will make a big difference, increasing access to jobs and keeping our state's economy strong. And we're asking the new legislature and the new governor to stand with us to get the job done together. Good morning, my name is B. Kyle. I'm the president and CEO of the St. Paul Area Chamber of Commerce. We've come together under the banner of Keep Minnesota Moving because we must expand transit across the state to increase access to jobs and attract future workers. These workers consistently say that they don't want to use a car. The great news is that transit benefits both Minnesotans on a bus or a train and those who are driving from the perspective of less congestion. Minnesotans do understand this and we broadly support more transit. A poll conducted this fall found that 58% of Minnesotans want to use transit more frequently and 74% support making additional investments in transit and that support is across party lines. That broad support also exists for greater Minnesota. 78% agree with the statement that we need to expand transportation choices in rural Minnesota. Minnesotans want more options. We've seen the success and positive response firsthand in St. Paul and the East Metro. A great example is the A-Line, which is the first part of the arterial bus rapid transit or ABRT system planned for the region. We love the A-Line in part because it stops right by the state fairgrounds and the new home of the Minnesota United soccer team, of course. But more ABRT routes, one of our key initiatives, are exactly what we need to come together and keep moving. Uh, the A-Line and ABRT more broadly is about speed, convenience, and efficiency. ABRT buses make fewer stops. The ticket machines or go-to card tickets mean no waiting when you board. Buses come every 10 minutes with very little waiting. And signal priority moves you through traffic lights much more quickly. Those are priorities we all can get behind. Last year there was bipartisan support at the Capitol for ABRT, but it didn't make it through. And this year we want to be sure that there's no delay in moving forward with the next phase of our region's ABRT development. The next line slated for an upgrade in ABRT service is the Route 5 corridor, 
which is the bus route with the highest ridership in the state. It would become the D-Line, running from Brooklyn Center to Bloomington and providing upgraded service for thousands of people. The bottom line is that a better transit system will benefit the state's economy. Great things are happening in our transit system right now. We are here to amplify those positives and uh, encourage the new legislature and the new governor to make additional investments that will benefit our entire state for decades to come. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Will Schroer. I'm executive director of East Metro Strong. The key point I'd like to leave you with this morning is that we all know when we provide quality transit across Minnesota, people from all walks of life use it to make their lives better. B just spoke about the A-Line, but there are other great examples, whether it's the Green Line in St. Paul and Minneapolis, where ridership doubled in that corridor with the introduction of higher quality service. I'd like to share some additional thoughts and background about our coalition's other key priorities, then we'll take your questions. One of our initiatives is to improve the current bus system by funding the top projects in the Metro Transit's service improvement plan. That's important because the, our bus system gets the job done for so many people. It's the backbone of our transit system. Tens of thousands of Minnesotans are using buses every day to get to work, school, shopping, play. I was on the A-Line the other day. Uh, a couple got on, they'd just been shopping at Whole Foods and uh, that was how they got to shopping and got back to their home. It's part of everyday life for tens of thousands of Minnesota, Minnesotans. Metro Transit has put together with a lot of input from riders, from citizens, from jurisdictions across the region, a service improvement plan. And uh, we wanna make sure this isn't something that sits on the shelf. It's a real live document, we need to act on it. And we want to start implementing that plan with funding starting in 2019. Peer regions across the US are expanding their bus systems and seeing results. Metro Transit, unfortunately, has just announced cutbacks to our system. Let's come together to make sure that we have one of the best bus systems in the country. The plans are there. We only need to make it a priority. It's also a priority for our coalition to fully fund greater Minnesota transit needs. Transit is not just a Twin Cities issue. Minnesotans in greater Minnesota choose to take more than 12 million rides every year across uh, the state from south to north. Greater Minnesota transit providers have also been working hard to improve, and when they do, just as here in the region, Minnesotans respond. For example, when Southern Minnesota Area Rural Transit System, whose acronym I love is SMART, merged across four counties, Freeborn, Steel, Mower, and Wasika, ridership increased 25%. In, a, in an area where we are happy, whether it's in roads or in transit, to see improvements in the single digits, we're ex really excited to see these kind of double digit improvements, whether it's in greater Minnesota or here in the region. We know that there are increasing transit needs in greater Minnesota, and we strongly support funding meeting those needs statewide. So, Keep Minnesota Moving, finally, will also push to fully fund core Metro Transit operations. A couple of years ago uh, in the 2017 session, Metro Transit faced a substantial deficit which would have led to a 40% cut in service across the region. Our three organizations met with our member businesses and had conversations with commuters at suburban park and ride lots, and I remember them well because I'm not usually out at five in the morning, to make people aware of the proposed cuts. Commuters, in response, actively reached out to legislators and strongly encouraged them to not cut this important service. Fortunately, lawmakers listened and partially addressed the shortfall with 70 million, but in only one-time funds. So the underlying issue has not gone away. We will be working to ensure that the operating funds are available to keep our bus system strong. To conclude, we think that now is the time to invest in transit that will strengthen our economy, make our state an even better place for businesses, employees, their families, and all of us who move around Minnesota. Thank you very much. We'll be happy to answer your questions. Your stance on the gas tax increase? Uh, we don't. We, uh, we look back at all of the bipartisan work that has been done, in, whether it's 10, 15 years, and everybody involved in those efforts, whether it's the governor's uh, task force on transportation finance or, or similar ones, has decided that the system needs a lot more revenue, a lot more funding, uh, and we have a new crop of legislators that we want to talk with about how to get that 
that revenue into the system, but we don't yet have that stance on the gas tax. You do say you need new revenue, but not identifying how you get that. That's correct. And I would add that the gas tax is constitutionally dedicated to roads and bridges, so any discussion about a gas tax or new revenue um, will ensure we'll have a, a connection to transit and an investment in our transit system across the state. Mm -hmm. Well, but isn't, it's easy to spend money. There's lots of people upstairs who want to spend money. Paying for it is always the issue. And the business groups have come in the last several years and said you should spend more money on these things but decided for whatever, it's internal politics or whatever, not to support specific funding mechanisms. How do you get rid of that disconnect? That you, you want them to spend money, but you're not willing to put your home behind specific revenue sources. I think what we're showing you today is we are ready to, to have a real conversation about transit, a conversation across the state that hasn't been had in a robust way. And um, we believe that it needs to be connected to the broader conversation around transportation and building a system that works for the state. To Will's earlier point, um, you know, revenue is going to be a conversation. Our coalition is just kicking off today, so we'll be having lots of conversations with business leaders, with legislators, with organizations across the state to better understand you know, what the appetite is to, to make those investments and how we can use existing um, funding streams to, to support and build out the system that we, we need to support our economy. What's the ballpark cost of these four initiatives? So we have a, a good idea of the component costs, and we're talking with Metro Transit about how those add up. So for example, and I, we, uh, I just want to get the numbers exactly <coughs> right here, so you'll forgive me if I uh, check my notes. <laughs> I'm looking for the full cost. There it is. Um, so we know, for example, that to complete the D-line uh, to turn the Route 5, the busiest bus route in the state, uh, into the D-line arterial bus rapid transit system, we need another $35 million. Uh, we're talking with Metro Transit about how much it costs to do the B-line after that. We don't know yet. Uh, they have a pretty good idea, uh, but we don't want to give you a number that turns out to be wrong. So uh, to accelerate the full network, we're going to need a, a harder number, and we're going to be getting that with Metro Transit, uh, developing that with them. What's the role of uh, light rail in this? Is there a role, or is it too politically difficult, given the Republicans' stance on huh? it? No, the, uh, the role of light rail is absolutely vital, uh, and the region has already made the commitments to build out uh, uh, Southwest, Botano, Riverview, and, and those lines are moving forward. We've identified the local matches for those lines, and now we have the, the, federal, the commitment on the federal side for Southwest, uh, and those lines are continuing to move forward. We support moving those lines forward as quickly as possible. That's not part of, you, part of your call for additional funding, is that correct? Not at the moment. We're, we're, light rail is absolutely vital, and those kinds of, of investments uh, we will continue to support. They've also taken a lot of conversation, and we want to make sure that other parts of the system get the same kind of focus. Are you been supporting maintaining the the share of operating expenses on the existing lines and the new lines when they come up as a 50-50 match. There are Republicans who do not want to pay operating costs on Green on uh, Southwest and if it's ever built lot. No. You, is there a position that you want to maintain that operating budget deal between the state and so I think it will continue to be important for the state to be a partner in all of our transit projects across the state. Southwest, as you know, is currently slated to, um, to have the counties fully pay the operating for that, and there is funding to do that. Uh, still up in the air on Botano and future lines, but that will be so a discussion that we have with legislators, a discussion that we have with other partners um, as we think about building a system that works for this region. I want to ask you about the politics of this. Do you feel that, that is, and I understand you support light rail, but it's not your focus in terms of additional funding. You say that other areas, bus and so on, need attention. Is that uh, fueled by the political reality of it, that you may be able to get more support from Republicans given that stance? They have said that bus is a lot more cost effective <coughs> Uh, than, uh, than light rail. I think to some extent it's fueled by the fact that we have lined up the resources necessary to build the lines in the system that we've planned. So Southwest is, you know, we broke ground on it. It is under construction. Um, Botno is well in the planning stages as well as Riverview, and those local dollars are um, committed to. We are, we have turned our sights to, to D.C. and our partners with the Federal Transit Administration. They're a key player in that, uh, in that 
in those projects, um, contributing 50% of the capital. So this is really an acknowledgement that you know, in the time since we've planned those corridors, um, we've seen a new technology, arterial bus rapid transit, come online, be incredibly successful, be you know, responded to um, incredibly well by, by riders and users. We see an opportunity to put a heck of a lot of people um, within you know, 30 minutes of a, a transit ride to their job by building out these five lines that, um, that we've talked about today. Is, is it an easier job to get a bill on the governor's desk if it focuses on ABRT as opposed to you know, future expansion of light rail? I, I certainly think we can't discount the fact that light rail has become a lightning rod political issue in, in this state. Um, and one that we have um, you know, worked with the legislature and many legislatures on over the course of decades in trying to advance these projects. Um, we do consistently hear um, from the Republicans in particular that you know, the bus system is the backbone of the system and it's the, the portion of the system that we should invest in. So to the extent that this um, responds to that and there is you know, energy and momentum to, to keep Minnesota moving by building out our um, regular route bus system as well as the arterial bus rapid transit system, I think that's a win for all Minnesotans. What about extending North Star to St. Cloud? That seems to come up. Thanks, Janet. So uh, we want to emphasize that we are interested in Minnesotans being able to move around the state. Uh, <laughs> Southwest Airlines hasn't used this motto for a while, and I don't know why, because I thought it was so great. You are now free to move about the country, yeah. right? And I want us to be now free to move about the state. Uh, I personally would love to see an extension of North Star to St. Cloud because I go up there from time to time and I'd love to have that option. I know other people would as well. Um, we, we were uh, touring the Thermo King plant in Bloomington uh, a couple of weeks ago and they told us that a guy from St. Cloud has been working there for many, many years and, and makes that trip every year uh, to build air conditioners for transit buses. Wouldn't it be great if he could take transit all the way to that job? Um, uh, we don't have a formal position on that extension, but uh, I, I don't think you'd find any, uh, any opposition uh, to making that corridor faster, more convenient, more accessible to everybody. Can I move you back a month as opposed to moving forward a month? Uh, we had an election, and certainly business affiliated PACs and others, some directly affiliated with chambers, some not, uh, gave a lot of money to people who were not taking positions that reflect what you're saying right now as far as increased revenue for for transit and transportation, specifically gas tax. So instead, upstairs, you're going to ask a bunch of people whose business spent fifty, hundred, two hundred thousand dollars against to pick up this issue. Can you talk about that disconnect with mm -hmm. business and business giving and I, this issue? Um, absolutely. I think that's part of our call to have a hard reset on the transit and transportation conversation in this state. It needs to be removed from the partisan political space and into the space around growing our economy and providing access to jobs. And that's what this coalition is really aimed at doing, is, is moving it away from a, a hyper-partisan conversation that gets used in a mailer to a discussion about how Minnesotans get to work. How do you get transit, sorry, but it always seems to get third billing around here, how do you get more money? And I understand gas tax increase is dedicated, but without somehow plugging into that and maybe getting a gas tax increase that funnels more money into roads and bridges, so therefore there's more left for transit. You understand? I, you haven't taken a stance on a gas tax increase, but how do you how do you get that kind of additional revenue some way without doing that? Sure. Thanks. Um, you know. Uh, Last year, there was, there was some objection to, you know, we really don't know how to do this, and I don't remember who said that, but uh, the Citizens League had come out literally the week before with a big report on transit finance that gave like six different ways to do it. And the ideas are out there. We're not going to pick one this morning for you. We're launching this, as Jonathan said, launching this today. We're going to have a lot of conversations with and go back to the political question you had, which is exactly the right one. But these are new people, right? There are, there are new faces. They haven't had this conversation yet. Let's work with them so they understand the six recommendations that the Citizens League came up with, all the recommendations that the, the previous uh, state task force on transportation finance came up with. These are not brand new questions that we have to start from scratch. The answers are out there. Now let's, with the new set of people, do the reset that Jonathan referred to and, and go from there. Have you had conversations particularly with the new suburban legislators? 
Yeah, we, um, uh, I was just at a, tra a state transportation policy conference in Atlanta with a couple of new legislators who were seeking to educate themselves, as I just said, on exactly these issues, uh, find out what other states are doing, and uh, come back and talk with their colleagues about what they learned. So I know that people are eager to do this. I know a couple of people uh, heard, uh, well, a lot of people heard very strongly from their constituents, like, look, I'm, I'm stuck here. Let's, let's act on this. So I know there's a lot of interest. I can share. I met with a number of them um, as they were running and in campaign mode. Um, we've scheduled meetings to sit down with all of the new suburban legislators in particular. What we're hearing from them is that they want to see movement on this issue in a way that we haven't seen in recent sessions. And I would, I would just echo that, that East and West Metro, you're seeing legislators interested in having the conversation, and that's what we're doing, grassroots meeting with all of them on both sides of the river. So this is a one Minnesota agenda. Does the fact that three of you are working together signify a change in your strategy? In the past, the East Metro, many people in the East Metro complain that they're not getting their fair share of it. And now, even now the biggest uh, projects are in the West Metro area. I mean, that's a fair question. I would say that it's a very important statement in my mind that we're three here standing together. If we intend on moving forward with a one Minnesota mindset, we need to partner to reflect that. It's a brand new day for lots of reasons with lots of people and this particular initiative needs us to work together. Uh, when it comes to the workforce commuter shed, when it comes to the companies themselves, they are much less interested on in what side of the river they're located on perhaps than we might be. So I would say it, uh, it needs not be an issue and that's why we're here together. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much.